I want to ask a question about what you do and about the Young Turks. Um, incredibly influential show in in the United States, but it has been very aligned with with Bernie Sanders in a similar way that we were to to Jeremy Corbyn. Now that that candidacy is is over, sort of where do you see your future strategic direction, and how are you going to relate to this presidential candidate? When to be honest, neither of you know, no one on show uh, offers that much to be excited by. One is just more repulsive than the other. How, how is your coverage going to be? Uh, you know, what's it gonna, what's it going to look like from now until November? The Young Turks. Well, I think that our coverage is going to remain, um, unfortunately, largely the same. Where there's plenty of critique to go around, whether the politicians we're talking about are Democrats or Republicans. Um, we, we, of course, have an advocacy component to what we do, and we advocate for progressive policies. Uh, we're going to continue the fight for single-payer health care. We're going to continue holding Nancy Pelosi's feet to the fire, regardless of how, um, you know, uh, toxic she's going to be, regardless of how much she's going to retaliate, and she certainly does retaliate. Um, we've seen it with her treatment toward uh, Representative Ocasio-Cortez and other uh, freshman progressive Democrats. But you know, our job is to promote progressive proposals. That's that's what we believe in. And if we are seeing Democrats go in f a further right wing direction, I mean, they, this trend has been happening for decades now. Um, we're going to continue, you know, influencing the public through our information, through the facts, and through the types of stories that, unfortunately, legacy media and mainstream media outlets here in the United States refuse to cover. I mean, it's kind of incredible how much people living in other countries know about our system of government, know about our political issues, know about our flaws and maybe even things that work. But in America, we're discouraged from learning about other systems. We're discouraged from learning about the Nordic model or what's happening in, in some of these Scandinavian countries. And that's the reason why I think older Americans hear a word like socialism and they panic. But there is a future for progressivism in the United States. I mean, if you uh, poll young voters, millennial voters, and the so-called Zoomers, they're overwhelmingly left. And, and we need to support them. We need to find avenues in which they can get elected into office. And we need to take the power because right now we have this corrupt model. We have incredibly old uh, democratic leadership. And I don't just mean old as in their age. I mean, they've been in power forever and we need to find a way to change that. So we're gonna focus on more strategic conversations on how to get more progressives into Congress and also how to mobilize and organize uh, workers to get what we desperately need in this country, which is um, more unionized work, more unionized jobs, uh, better pay, and better accountability when it comes to uh, the executives in these companies. Yeah, I feel like we spoke actually on a Jacobin uh, call a couple of weeks ago, and we had something akin to this conversation where I feel that the experience of the last six months in Britain and the United States is quite similar in so much as the left believed they could lead a broader coalition uh, with the center. Yeah. We call it liberals, you wouldn't call it liberals in the US, but I, you know who I mean, the kind of MSNBC crowd. Now, that's always been the coalition behind Obama or behind Hillary Clinton in 2016. But obviously, it was being led from the centre. Uh, and they're always accustomed to leading that coalition. Same with Labour in this in this country. They take left votes for granted, the Labour movement for granted, blue collar workers for granted. Now, what Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn did was kind of capsize that, whereby you had the same coalition. But for the first time in a very long time, they said, well, actually, now these coalitions are going to be led from the left. Uh, by left-wing politicians. Uh, to what extent do you think the experience of the last six years, the United uh, six months, in the United States, kind of means that's not possible? H has the kind of extent of the kickback against Bernie Sanders and the kind of almost unthoughtful, unstrategic support uh, for for Joe Biden? Do, do you think it's plausible to have a coalition between the centre and the left, where the left is allowed to lead, or do you just think we have to rethink our entire theory of change and how we're going to bring about progressive reforms in the United States? I think that it's a fool's errand to think that you can work with the so-called moderates of the Democratic Party, uh, because the moderates of the Democratic Party are not actually influenced by policy, right? So when they come at policy from a more right-wing perspective, it's not because they genuinely believe it, it's because they're 
receiving campaign donations from the same corporate influences that fund Republican politicians, right? So I think that that's like one of the biggest issues here. And now it's, I apologize for being as amused by the story as I am, but I'm reading about how Joe Biden's donors are telling him that he cannot choose Elizabeth Warren as his running mate. They, they refuse to support him if, she, if he does. And she was under the impression that, hey, maybe if I work with these moderates, with these corporate Democrats, mm -hmm. with the very person who encouraged me to become a politician because I was so disgusted by his bankruptcy bill, if I just work with those people, maybe we'll get some progressive uh, proposals out there. That It's not going to work that way. Um, the moderates are never going to allow the progressives to be in charge. They despise the moderates. You see it in their uh, rhetoric. You see it in the discourse. And that's not going to change. What I think will change, though, is you know certain influencing factors. Uh, the media, for instance, more and more young people uh, are, are getting all of their news coverage and content through independent sources. And there really wasn't progressive media prior to Bernie running in 2016. He kind of started getting some name recognition after we were interested in him. We started covering him. And then we started noticing all of these other progressive independent media sources popping up all over the place. I absolutely love that because eventually the cable news model will be obsolete. It's young people don't watch cable news. Everyone who watches cable news is in their 60s and 70s. And that's fantastic. So I think that, yes, there are things that we can learn from uh, in, in from the last six months. But one thing that I don't want is for progressives to become discouraged. Luckily, I haven't seen it. I don't think that most people are discouraged. I don't think they want to give up. Um, but what we do need to do is find strategic avenues, whether through uh, getting elected into Congress or really amplifying progressive voices in independent media to bolster uh, progressive candidates. And one other thing, actually, I think that we need to make a better case for what type of common ground we have with average voters, uh, regardless of their political identity. I think that sometimes the left can get a little too caught up in, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, the identity politics in America, right? So the thing that really does improve everyone's life, regardless of your race, your sexual identity, your gender identity, is a better economic system, a just economic system, where we also decommodify um, parts of our society that should be considered a human right, like healthcare. And so, yes, we should fight for transgender rights. Yes, we should fight uh, to do something about the fact that we imprison more Black men in this country uh, than any other group of, of or any other demographic. But when we start rejecting the economic policies that really do bring us all together, I think that it hurts all of us, regardless of uh, which disenfranchised group we identify with. Anna, it's so brilliant to have you on Navarra Media for the first time. We'll definitely be incredibly keen to get you back on over the coming weeks and months to talk about the, the presidential election as it develops and, and politics in America more generally. Um, we are obviously massive fans of the Young Turks, and I don't even need to advertise it to our audience because I know from the comments under our videos, they all are as well. Um, but we're going to let you go now, unless, Aaron, you want to? No, that's everything. I think no? you're right. Let's okay. get Anna back on in the next couple of months. There's a lot going on in the US uh, over the course of 2020. So Absolutely. I'd love to do it. Anna, Thank you so much. Yes, definitely. Good night. Night.